so much for joining me on this video. Maybe you've come here because you've just received a Bare Root new import order. Maybe you've come here because you have a languishing Rapiculus Lelia and you don't know what to do with it. Maybe you've come here because you're planning to buy yourself some import orchids and this is not exclusive for Rapiculus Lelias. I just happen to have five examples that I recently received in the mail. And it can be a little bit daunting when you see what comes out of a box if it's a recent import. Even if you buy directly from the nursery, let's say in South America, any nursery, and you get a recent import that is bare root, or you get a recent import announced as such from a nursery within the country that you're in, and then it comes in a pot and there are absolutely no roots. The reason you might get a pot and you take out your new orchid and it had recent import announced on the web page is because it is a recent import, the orchid hasn't rooted in, and then you think you got a bad quality orchid. No, the only difference between a bare root import directly from a South American nursery as opposed to the nursery in your country is they've taken the orchid out of the packaging and just shoved it into a pot and put bark around it, and that's it. The orchid hasn't had time to acclimate, it hasn't had time to grow any roots or anything like that. That's the only difference. They might as well just send it to you bare root. But obviously for a nursery, it's a bit more difficult to take care of thousands of orchids that arrive into their operations bare root the way I do. But for us, hobby growers and lovers of imports such as from Brazil, I want to go through with you as a reference video with regards to what I do with my bare root orchids when they arrive, no matter if it's rapiculous or not. It's just that it is the time for my rapiculous lelias to get soaked. And I was gonna talk through that with you with regards to what I do. If you remember or you haven't seen my unboxing video, these are the ones that I have out of that recent shipment. And since the unboxing, I have done some cleanup operations to make them a little bit more visually appealing, even though if you don't take the cheese off, there's nothing wrong with it. I just prefer to do so for my own peace of mind so that I can see what is going on underneath the sheaths. So if I take, for example, this Lelia Millery, when you get imports, usually you might have new growths, which is always a good thing. And if you have, in the case of Rapiculus Lelias, if you have uh, several storage organs that are nice and fat and plump, even though they look desiccated, there's nothing wrong with this one, and I'm sure it's going to make it. This new growth is its saving grace and its hope. Now, when you get something like this, for example, and you see the base is all brown like that, that is not rot or anything like that. That's completely dried out. The only thing is that this lead is going to fail. There's no life in the base of this anymore. So that will fail, but again, there are enough storage organs for this one to be able to make it. So if you get something like this, don't despair. It's not a pretty sight. It can be somewhat daunting, but this is going to be okay, even though at this point, it looks like it belongs in the bin. No, there's, there's plenty of life in these organs in order to make this one survive. It is extremely set back, but if you get something like this in the mail, and again, from the unboxing, I've cleaned them up since, don't worry, it's going to be all right. But here's a problem with regards to a very, very small one with tiny, tiny little storage organs. If you get an orchid like this in, here's where issues can start to arise. There is no big structures. That is when they classify orchids as difficult to grow. There's this orchid isn't difficult to grow. It's just very, very difficult to pull through when it comes in a state that there's plenty of desiccated bulbs right here and the storage organs are minute. Now, this one, for example, has some little viable roots, very, very small, but they are there and that is also a sign of hope. There is no guarantee that this orchid is gonna make it but that is the nature and the risk of the game. If you were to buy this from a nursery as a recent import, you wouldn't get any better established orchid than this. It would just come with a pot and bark. So here's what I do. 
For example, all the orchids that you see here have been cleaned of their sheaths just to find out what is going on underneath. I use plain reverse osmosis water to remove all the sheaths and then see if there's anything going on. There are no pests or anything like that. This is a very good example and I could pretty much pot this up any day. The roots are viable even though they look dry. For the time being, what I do, for example, let's just pretend these have been soaking for quite a while and I'm leaving them on this tray to dry out. I always lie them down in such a way that all the growths that are new and growing are facing the source of the light so that I can get an upright growth habit from any of the new growths and not something that goes wonky, which is going to make a very, very complicated repot. So my little bloom and shiny eye here, you can see there are no new growths or anything, but I don't have to lay that in the direction of the light. I just leave it. Everybody else with their new growths is in the direction of the light source on the point of drying. I think I have these now for over a week and you can see I still haven't potted them up and I have my reasons for that. They have been through a lot, a lot of stress, a lot of traveling, different hemisphere now as well. So I every day go and soak them in a mix of seaweed and calcium magnesium. That is all. No other kind of fertilizer, just seaweed, calcium, magnesium. So this one you can see because it is upright, it has its roots and I fill it up so that it can soak this for, a bit, for at least an hour. If, if I do this one, for example, longer, it doesn't matter because of the roots that it has. Just to the base, just to cover the roots. So this one's pretty easy to take care of. My recommendation when it comes to little ones like this, that are really languishing and struggling, and this one has actually perked up a little bit since I received it, I lay it down with the new growths that are somewhat tender facing up. And then I pour enough water in there just to cover the base of the orchid, even as it's laying down. So if you can see into the container when it's flat, there's one growth touching the water and that's okay because when it comes time to dry out, that'll be fine. And then I just leave this as well for an, an hour. And I do that with all of them. If they are too small to stand up, I lay them down. And this is the thing, when it comes to getting bare root orchids, especially when they're small like this. Potting up quickly is not a good idea because once you pot them up without many roots to work with, there's a dehydration process through the leaves that could take them down very, very fast. This way I can hydrate the leaves, hydrate the orchid. You see there are some little roots that are viable that is so helpful but it's more about protecting as well the dehydration process of the leaves so they don't desiccate. If I have this orchid potted up, it makes my life much, much more difficult. So when you get orchids like this in, the best thing to do is not be so eager to pot them up, leave them, and always every day, just give them a little bit of a bath with a very, very good nutrition base of calcium, magnesium, and seaweed. I use 100 parts per million of calcium, magnesium, and 60 parts per million of seaweed at 6.3 pH, because being bare root, there's no need to be considering anything about the media and acidity and such. The pH stays as is. And also, I try to make sure that once they're in the tub, for example, with a new growth like this, that the new growth, again, doesn't touch the water at all. But if I were to place it on a shelf now, in the shade, then the new growth would be facing away from the direction of light, which is over here. It's very important in my eyes to keep those new growths 
as they come and as they develop, growing upright and not in a wonky way because when it comes time to pot up, you want that growth to be straight and not cause a problem. So I have one more. This one's pretty easy as well. Growth is growing upright and I want to keep it that way. This is the Mantecari. And then I soak it. On new arrivals like this, if they are really, really weak, in some cases you will see some that look very horrible and you are afraid they're not even going to make it, they're dying. It is no problem to soak them overnight on day one. Keep them indoors, soak them overnight, completely submerged if need be. And then on the next day, you take them out, put them on a tray, consider the light source, and if you have any new growths, lay them in such a way that the growths are pointing to the light source. I'm going to show you one example where I'm working with the orchid to see that she grows her new growths upright because according to her current status, I cannot pot her up. Cardimii. This one is a problem, but I'm glad to have it because I can show you. It is in a clear glass with a little bit of water at the base. Not much. The roots are dead. There's no substance in them at all. This is scary when you receive this. This is where you think this is not going to work. This is terrible. Again, here's the thing. These little guys are survivors. If you have chubby pseudobulbs like this, and lots of them, some of them may start to desiccate, but there is a lot of hope in this orchid despite getting it like this. And this is the cleaned up version. When I got it out of the box, it was in a terrible, terrible state. It looked really, really bad, but it's been since cleaned of the sheaths. But again, no roots. You will very, very rarely get viable roots if you get new imports. And that is then again, regardless of whether you buy a new import announced as such from a nursery from your country or directly from the source in South America. But you can see there's a new growth here. And look what it's doing. It's coming straight at us. Now, that wouldn't be a big deal to pot up because eventually it will grow up towards the light. But look at this new growth right here, sticking straight out. This is going to be a challenge to pot up because look at the rhizome base. How low would I need to go to stabilize the orchid in the pot? And what am I doing then to that new growth? Another reason then as well, do not go too quickly on potting these up. Give them time to acclimate. They're not going to die. Keep giving them a nutrient solution on the daily and then let them dry out on the daily as well. So I have this one in a glass container because what I'm trying to achieve is make sure again that the leaves don't dry out and stop the dehydration through the leaves. The roots aren't drawing any water at all, but this little container has very high humidity protecting the leaves from desiccating because the strength has to go into these new growths in here. These new growths will provide new roots and I want them to go upright so that I can pot this up. And this is where I'm saying, be careful to be too quick about potting up your new imports if you get an orchid that has absolutely no roots. You cannot react as fast if it is in a pot. You cannot protect the leaves from dehydrating if it's in a pot. What you can do, and if you have that available, if you have a humidity tent with humidifiers and everything else, that is a different ball game. I am doing this without any of that equipment. And I just wanted to bring that to your attention so that this is not discouraging. It's a lot more work, but it is not discouraging. There is hope in every single one of these. And if you've never had an, an import like this coming directly from the nursery in South America, it is quite scary. So I wanted to put your mind at rest. Do not rush into the potting up. Give them a daily soak of calcium, magnesium, and seaweed. Make sure that the leaves don't dehydrate. 
give them a way that they can stay with a lot of humidity around them. If they're small and tiny like this, submerge them. No problems whatsoever. If they're small and tiny like this, with new growths that are really, really delicate and you don't want or you're afraid of getting them to rot, then lay them down with the new growths facing up and when they dry out, everything will be okay. But the little leaves, don't let them get to the chance of desiccating. They need to stay plump. That's all they have in order to make it. And that is why I don't repot straight away. This gives me so much more opportunity to see what the orchids are doing for the first week, 10 days, maybe two weeks. We're going to be potting up the crisper pretty soon because look at those roots. She's ready to go. She's fine. But the other ones, doing it this way, I have much more control over how I can protect them, how I can nurture them with having them bounce back from everything they've gone through until they came into my collection. I know that it looks really daunting when you get a box and it all looks dry, shriveled and dead. I'm going to link my unboxing video and then you can maybe do your own comparison and see how they looked like when they came out of the box. I just thought I would put it out here as a reference video with every unboxing I would do, let's say, in the future regarding my Brazilian imports. And once again, this is not exclusive to Rapiculus Lelias. I'm doing exactly the same thing with my Dendrobium antenatum. Not potted up, it's been with me, came in the same box, and all I'm doing is soaking it and letting it dry out, soaking it and letting it dry out. I have one new growth, I have viable roots, but I'm not potting it up just yet because I still want to see, is it going to suffer and struggle? And if it is, then I can quickly put it into a basin filled with water just to help it along. This is how I deal with new imports. And if you are struggling with any of your new imports or if you have a Rapiculus lelia that is struggling as well, and it is already in a pot, it has no roots. If you see leaves starting to desiccate while that Rapiculus lelia is in the pot, do not wait. If it doesn't have roots in the pot, get it out of the pot and start this kind of a treatment daily into water, out of water, into water, let it dry. And you'll have a much, much better margin of success in getting them established and then being able to pot them up. So I really hope this was helpful. It's just a thought that crossed my mind after my unboxing video that a lot of people were like, oh my goodness, those orchids. Yes, they were scary when they came out of the box. If you saw that video and you look now, maybe you'll see a marginal improvement on all of them. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you have any questions at all regarding an orchid, I've shown you mainly Rapiculus, any orchid, Cattleya, Catacetinae, anything that you get or want to order directly from a nursery in South America and you have any doubts, please, please, the comment section is there for a purpose. Leave your questions in the comments below and I, I can troubleshoot on an individual orchid basis. I have had these imports now for the last three years. I've only lost one Rapiculus lelia because of my dog and I'm losing another little Rapiculus lelia from last year just because it was in such a terrible, terrible state that it arrived. It is one of the ones with the tiniest little structures as well. That's why these are more risky and it had scale. So all of these factors, if an orchid was attacked by scale and has little structures like this, it gets even harder. So this works for me and I'm sure 100% it can work for you. So any questions, any orchid, doesn't have to be Rapiculus lelia. If you're interested, you let me know in the comments below and we'll talk about it. Thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Hope that you have a wonderful day. And I really hope that this video encourages you to be able to go to a South American nursery and order from them directly without having to think that, you know, there's no hope because the orchids come so weak. I hope that helped and encouraged you. Have a wonderful day. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye.